Sunday ordinary time. Uh, guided by the County of Los Angeles, uh, the health department, this week they've asked the public to discontinue singing and recitation even of prayers. We know it's going to be tough. It's ingrained in us. Uh, but today we will have instrumental for our music, uh, and we'll try our best to follow the guidelines that LA County is giving us. Let's see. I'm giving I, your staff person for the day, I'm giving our, our staff people day off from for the weekend for the 4th of July. Thank you for continuing your support of us in the parish. We are striving to keep stock of our supplies to continue keeping things safe. If when you are shopping and you're able to pick up a brand name of sanitizing wipes that you could donate to the parish, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, that would help us keep things sanitary around here. Uh, the last blood drive we've had was really successful, and the Red Cross has invited us to be another site to have another one, and that will happen on the 15th of July from 1 to 7. Uh, there will be a COVID-19 antibody test as part of that uh, blood drive, so if you'd like to sign up, uh, please give us a call at the office for doing that. Father Rich is our celebrant this day. Uh, we continue praying for each other. We bring our own needs and cares to the Lord this day, and we bring those prayers in a moment of silence before our Lord. Today we also pray for Maria de la Peña. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Oh, As we rise in faith, giving virtual hugs to each other or supporting each other, knowing just welcoming each other, stay in your box, don't leave your box. Uh, with help God, we gather and we pray. <laughs> from following and believing in Jesus Christ be always with you. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Nice to see most of you this morning. Uh, if you're out looking and you get those wipes, if you go past C's, I've been really struggling these past three months without any C's candy. It's been closed and I think it opened, so you can drop the boxes off at the... <laughs> And yesterday I missed the parade so much I got Father Bill to drive me around the block and I waved to everybody. <laughs> this is also what we call the 4th of July weekend where we celebrate the country's birthday. And we recognize that we are an imperfect union, still trying to put into practice the values that have made us who we are, in the good times and the bad. So we ask God to help us to do that in this time, in this day and age, because we've never lived through what we're living through now. And there's no one that knows the exact way to go Though there's a lot that may think they know. So we reflect on the gospel's beautiful words today. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, all you who are 
tired and who labor, come to me and I'll show you something. Thank you for responding to that call today. Jesus reminds us that he wants to give us his peace, peace in our hearts and in our families. May we let go of the burdens we carry and allow Christ to transform them into new life. And so when our hearts remain hardened and cold to the needs of our brothers and sisters, Lord, have mercy. Amen. When we fail to recognize you in the faces of our neighbors, Christ, have mercy. Amen. When we do not help ease the burden of others, but become a burden to others, Lord, have mercy. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to the fullness of life. Amen. Loving God, we know that you're already here, and that you invite us to come to you. And so in a profound and tangible way, shake us from our complacency, open our hearts, broaden our minds, strengthen our convictions, and break us from the fears we hold on to so that we can live our lives more fully and freely wherever you lead. We ask this through Christ our Lord. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not 
under the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal body also. The Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Usually on retreats for our teenagers, parents write them letters. They write their letters and they express in those letters how they feel to their children. It's one thing, you know, to say, I love you, sometimes the way we say it each day. It can almost become a response like when we sneeze and we say, God bless you. Most of the time, there's no meaning in that. It's just a spontaneous response. And sometimes, unless we stop and choose to give meaning to what we say or what we do, they just become words and actions. Especially the way our world was before March. So I asked the kids, <clears throat> why do you always cry so much when you get those letters and you don't cry at home when your mom and dad say I love you? No matter of fact, I tell them sometimes you even act embarrassed, especially if your friends are around. Why now? 
Why are there always so many tears from just about every teenager when they read the letter? This was one young man's response. Dear Father, we were asked to write you about why the letters from our parents affect us so much. I think part of the reason is because before receiving this letter, I had been feeling very unloved and unwanted. I didn't feel like I was really worth anything because no one seemed to have time for me or care about me. I had come to the conclusion that my existence was unimportant and irrelevant. But reading the letters made me feel differently. They made me feel loved. They made me feel wanted. It was overwhelming to realize that there were people that cared whether I lived or died, whether I was happy or sad, people who thought I was worth something. Knowing that my family still loves me, despite the fact that I can't seem to do anything but disappoint them, it made me realize that people do care for me. But even if people didn't care, my self-worth should not be determined by what others think of me. I matter. And these letters showed me that. There were a number of sentences that uh, touched my heart, but none more so than the fact that Knowing that my family loves me despite the fact that I can't seem to do anything but disappoint them. Now, one doesn't come to that realization unless they're told that over and over and over again. Most of us believe what people in authority say to us. And sometimes we're not aware of what our words are doing to the people that we say we love and we care for. Because we have to make gestures to nourish that relationship every day. You know that better than I, especially those of you who are married or in love. Either you grow in love by choices you make, or you grow unconsciously most of the time out of it. Or sometimes you just are there. Anthony DeMello shares the following story. He said, why is everyone here in this monastery so happy except me? The answer was, because they have learned to see goodness and beauty everywhere, said the Master. Well, why don't I see goodness and beauty everywhere? Because you cannot see outside of yourself. 
but you fail to see inside. So this is uh, not the normal way of doing Mass and doing things. I don't know if we will ever go back to what we call normal. I'm not sure that that will exist anymore. Some people hope for it, but I believe that because of what has happened these past three months and continues to unfold, something is being said to us, something is being done to us. We're doing something to each other and saying something to each other. The question when we sit still long enough is always what? It's who are we becoming? We're not the same as we were before. I'm not. Uh, and uh, living with Father Bill on a daily basis, watching him uh, go through the chemo, watching him sleep 10, 12 hours a day compared to the way he was before, and watching him hardly eat anything uh, does something to me. I pretend it doesn't. You know, people who saw me today say, you look good. I think I do. I picked myself up pretty good today for you. Thank you for fixing your, I don't know anything, but thank you for doing the same. But, you know, we're all, if we're honest, sometimes great pretenders. No one, no one knows what's going on in my heart or mind at this time. And I don't know what's going on in yours. And I don't know what's going on in his unless I take time to do that terrible beauty of asking him. I, I would rather not, because I'm afraid of the response that I get. I'm good at taking care of you, I think. I struggle with taking care of my family and those I love. I sometimes just take them for granted because I have you. I think sometimes we do that too. I think sometimes you may give the best to the people you work with, and sometimes when you come home, you're, you're so tired that you can't give the best to those who need it at home. You may give them crumbs, and crumbs are okay if you know that that's what you're giving. So this period of time causes us to it causes us to fashion this time, not let it fashion us. So I just look a little more deeply at him, which causes me when I go out then to look a little more deeply at you. Causes me to think and to risk saying some things to him that I don't want to say because of the answers, but I know, I want to know the end. I want to know how he's feeling. I want to know what he's thinking about as he goes through and finishes his fourth round of chemo and getting ready to have a body scan to see whether the cancer has spread or whether it stays still. I don't know what my answer is going to be in the midst of that, uh, especially if we hear from the doctor that it is for, I, so these things go on in my mind, but they, that, that's a part of what's going on in my mind. The other part is, uh, yesterday got up and he felt so good, he said, let's go over to Barnes and Noble. And then on the way home he said, are you hungry? Which is a translation for, not am I hungry, but is a translation of him saying, I'm hungry, which usually he isn't. So at 11 o'clock, he pulled into Wendy's to get a hamburger, which he ate. This morning he got up, he wasn't hungry. Up and down, up and down. How we choose to create an atmosphere to receive that. And all in the gospel today, again, this reminds me, is that Jesus says, come to me all you who are weary, tired, 
overwhelmed, burdened. Where do you hear that out? Where, where else is that written? Something like that. Where else is that? Is it written on the bottom of the Statue of Liberty? Aren't there some words just like that? Give me your tired, your weary, your homeless. I'm going to say something now. I don't mean to be political, but today sometimes people translate what you... I've never gone into the pulpit with the intentions of being political. I'm aware of that. But I'm also aware of the struggle with that. I don't know how you can separate the two. I, I, you, you, you can again confront me after mass. But you know what our motto is in our country? What is it? In God we trust. How do you, how do you begin then and say that we're going to separate the, the state and we're going to separate the church when our motto is in God we trust? How do you do that when every piece of money you have in your pocket has in God we trust? How do you do that when the Senate can begin all their sessions with a prayer and have a chaplain? And the same with Congress, but the schools can't. How do you do that when we say people have the right to carry guns, but you can carry them on the airplane and other places, and we're okay with that? But we're not okay. Uh, I'm just saying today that things are just not so black and white. That there's a lot of confusion out there, and that we have to be focused somewhere that is going to guide us. I'm not sure where that is for you, but I have a feeling it is the gospel. It has to be the gospel for us who are here this morning. So my invitation to you is that we, first of all, be more aware of the life that God has given us to live and the people that we live it with and the choices we make in how to live and how as one person said one time the most ignorant person isn't the one who can't read or write the most ignorant person is the one who can't learn unlearn and learn again and that's what's happening with us we're, we're relearning a new way to live. We're relearning a way again to treat each other. You know, the, uh, the time that my father smacked me across the face were two or three times. One was when I called him by his first name, Al. And I did that to show off. And I didn't know my friends were behind. And he just whacked and said, I'm always your father. I never forgot that. <laughs> it's a lesson tangibly learned. But he also smacked me when I cursed. When I said certain words that today are seemingly acceptable. Now, when did they become acceptable? When we make them that way. There are still words, there are still things that we do or don't do that are cruel and hurtful to people, and we know what they are. We know what a word can do to someone. You know it. You know it. Watch it with our children to affirm the goodness and beauty of who they are can raise them to a pedestal and to call them whatever they want to call so that they live their life knowing that no matter what I do, I'm going to disappoint you. We have that power. And God reminds us of that whenever you choose to come here. There has to be a place like this to say, there's another way to live. So we ask God for the, the blessings that... Uh, the, the roots of our country were founded in, in goodness, in kindness, in understanding, in treating each other in a human way. 
That's why men and women go off to war and die. So that we don't lose that. They're willing to give their life for that. But it's not a bad. It's us. People who don't know us go and lay down their lives for us so we can live the way we live. And sometime, someplace, in some way, I think we need to say thank you. And the best way we can do that today is the choices we make in how to live the life God still breathes into us so we can breathe that life into each other. For that we need help. And that's why we're here, I think. Let us pray. Before we begin these prayers of the faithful, I would ask you to allow whatever prayers might have come into your mind or whatever feelings and thoughts you had since you've been here. Let them surface in your hearts, in your minds, in your beings. You are the source of joy and the center of our lives, O God. As we offer you our prayers and our concerns, teach us again how to put our trust in you. Our response says, Lord, we trust in you. Lord, Lord we, we trust, trust in you. For all of us still struggling from the effects of COVID-19, we ask that you remove this sickness from the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we, we trust, trust in you. For our nation, as we celebrate the birth of our great country, May we see each other as brothers and sisters. May our divisions be healed, our dreams come to fruition, and the dignity of each soul be realized. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we, we trust, trust in you. Heal us, loving God, of prejudices, of our fears and misunderstandings of those we call neighbors. For all those who are struggling to provide for their families and for themselves, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we trust in you. For those who are sick and suffering, may they experience healing and restoration. Especially Shelby Rothberg, Josie Regalado, Rayanne Ramos, Joshua Hurtado, Maria Radueta, Danny Felipe, and Ascension Rodriguez. And for all who have died, especially Wayne Koo, Carlos Torres, and Rachel Sarando Duran, may they rest peacefully in your loving embrace, and may those who love them be comforted. We pray to the Lord. We Lord, trust, trust in you, O oh Lord. Sometimes on the television, uh, there used to be a lot more about the doctors and nurses and healthcare people who go to work every day in intensive care. That's not on as much anymore. That's the way sometimes our life is. Kind of fades off the screen. And yet every day they're still doing what they have been doing since March. And every day some of them wish that they didn't have to. And every day they see people dying and sick in ways that they, as from their words, have never seen in their life. And sometimes I just think that's what they're supposed to do. So we pray and remember them today for the faithfulness to the oath that they took and for strength and courage each day to be faithful to that and for health and safety for them and their families. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women.
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We have no collection today. Please be seated. But there is a basket in the back there. Now, I, I do want to tell you on behalf of Father Chris in the parish, I, when I read the bulletin and see how good and faithful you have been, in turning in uh, your envelopes and your money so that the church can continue to do what it does. It, it's just wonderful. So th thank you for making the efforts, those of you who are able to, and many of you, uh, struggling with your own finances. So thank you. Together we pray that our gifts of bread and wine, gift of ourself as we are and are becoming every day, be acceptable to God, our loving Creator. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you renew our church in every age by raising up men and women, outstanding in holiness, living examples of your unchanging love. They inspire us by the ways they choose to live their life. They help us by their prayers so we can recognize you, the living God, in each person you created. And so together, as one family, we proclaim the power of your love as together we pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son. The night before he died, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all my people so that sin will be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until you come again by partaking of this mystery give us life through your spirit so that we can be conformed to the image of your son and confirm us in the bond of communion 
together with Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop, and the entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times today, by the light of faith, may continue to devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, so that sharing in their grief and in their pain, in their joys and in their hopes, we may faithfully bring them good news and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone know. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is over that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Damien and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. With renewed confidence in God as our Creator, together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You know, as a chaplain to a group of sisters once in the the 89-year-old year, sister that sat in the, in the front of the office every day. And I asked her, what do you do at this time in your life? What, is there any ministry or anything that you do? She said, all I do all day is do benevolent gazing. <laughs> Which means she just sits there and looks at people with a nice smile on her face. That's her ministry. She was happy with that. Well, since we can't touch each other, let us offer each other the sign of peace with the benevolent gaze. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. And this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who have been called to share in his life. Lord, I am not worthy to share in God's own mercy. system we have worked out to distribute communion seems to work out the number of weeks we've been here. There may be some new people here. We welcome you here if this is your first time back to Mass. You stay in your seats. Our ministers will come to you and distribute communion to you. If you uh, put out your hands flat so that uh, the minister can place communion in your hands, we are happy to share the Lord with you.
and see that it's 10 of 9. It's very seldom that you get out of Mass with me celebrating before the hour's up. But today it just goes to show what keeps us in longer is Trevor singing and not my preaching. <laughs> Lover of souls and gentle companion on our journey, we have opened ourselves to receive you. And we thank you for your invitation to come to you. As you take root in us, teach us again what to say and how to say it, what to do and how to do it. And may your holy presence be reflected in our thoughts, our words, and actions. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon each of you and those whom you love and be with you forever. Amen. Let us live what we just celebrated. Again, sisters and brothers, if you can remain in your boxes, our ushers will dismiss us each from the back, going to the front so we can get a key point.